Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Ag Network reporting to you here today from Sacramento, the headquarters of California Association of Pest Control Advisors. I'm here with the president and CEO of the organization. This is Ruth Ann Anderson. Um, she's been real busy this season, and, and, and one of our, the problems that our, our growers and PCAs have been dealing with is rats, uh, particularly in the west side of Fresno. There's a number of potential causes, but largely uh, what's being attributed is, is the large amount of uh, abandoned orchards and vineyards in the area that are causing some problems, I think, especially for their neighbors, uh, of, of people that are, that are growing and doing what they can to maintain their orchards and vineyards, usual operations. Uh, but rats has been one of, the, one of the problems among other pests that they're dealing with. And so um, it's become somewhat of an emergency situation. Could you tell us about that, Ruthann? Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. Um, you know, rats are um, not new. They're not novel here in the state of California. Most of the time we're kind of maintaining them in the background, but um, this is, we call it an infestation or invasion, and um, they they seem to be everywhere, um, just not in the west side of Fresno, but we, uh, in the fall, CDFA tracked them all the way down to Kern County and all the way up to Madera, uh, sorry, Merced. And so we have kind of a, a large map swath that we have them in multiple commodities. And, you know, there are PCAs and growers who are really struggling with this this season. And we've been working with a number of agencies to identify new resources, identify ways that we can help address this. Um, but it's it's been such a, an interesting process for me because normally when we're dealing with um, an infestation at this level, we're really dealing with something that's new and novel, right? So there's a lot of resources coming in, there's a lot of innovation coming in, um, but rats are kind of old as time, right? And so we, we haven't had that same kind of process. And so it's been a, an interesting pathway to, to try to find some resources and solutions for our PCAs and growers. And you know, it, it probably goes without saying, but just to make sure everybody knows that the, the rats, um, you know, are, are kind of dirty creatures. And so they're ones you really don't want to have around uh, as, as far as food safety concerns mm -hmm. go. But they're also causing some damage, right, in these orchards and vineyards? Absolutely. So they're not only damaging the irrigation system, which is kind of what we started to hear about last year after harvest when people turn the water on, a lot of irrigation damage, a lot of replacement, a lot of repairs. And then came the discussion around the girdling of the trees, damage not only for you know this season, but next season. And uh, a couple months ago, when I was out in the field with USDA and a couple other agencies, we saw a lot of damage even in the fruit currently. We're really interested to see what that damage continues to be, as well as what activities um, growers and PCAs have already taken, the steps they're taking in the field, how that might mitigate some of the damage. Yeah, that's something that we don't need, especially in, in times like this when our farmers are already dealing with a lot of other struggles mm -hmm. uh, economically with inflation and increased input costs. Um, so this calls for, you know, some emergency response, right? So you've been working with some of the agencies and uh, have we been able to get some exemptions or funding or anything to help uh, move the needle forward because this isn't something they're used to dealing with and, and maybe some of the rodenticides and things that they would normally use are, are not uh, labeled for use in the way that they're needed right now? So um, there's kind of a, a wide variety of resources that are coming forward during the dormant season. So uh, CDFA has redone their emergency label for zinc phosphide as well as diphasinone. You'll see those updates coming out very shortly. There's also a lot of information around some of the IPM um, learnings that other growers have had, some of the success that they've had in the field and opportunities there. There are a handful of um, grants that we know about that people have submitted for different field trials. So as those field trials get funded, we hope to be able to make those available to impacted growers. And so one of the ways that we are hoping to be able to not only identify an updated scope of how far the infestation has spread, but also get those resources into the hands of PCAs and growers is we created a survey link that we're doing in collaboration with the Almond Board of California and Western Growers to be able to really um, mobilize those resources as quickly as possible to the growers in our network. 
So we'll make sure we provide that link to the survey for, for growers to uh, growers and PCAs to fill out. Um, and this information, can you tell us where what, it, what exactly is it going to be used for and who's going to see it? Because I, I know growers are always concerned about putting their information out there and making sure that things are secure. Absolutely. So, you know, one of the interesting parts of this process has been to watch the rodenticide use um, increase over the year, um, increase exponentially. But um, as all of you probably know, you don't actually identify what pest um, you are addressing in your pesticide use reports. And so when we go and show the state, hey, there's this huge increase on rodenticides, um, I don't have anything that can say, but here's what it's tied to. And so what we plan to do is anonymize the data. It's not going to be tied to any specific field or any specific person, but we want to be able to demonstrate that, yes, the rodenticide increase that we're seeing this year is heavily tied to this rat infestation. So we can do that side of the storytelling. And then for us, it's really about being able to make sure that the right people are connected to the right resources. So. Um, no one should be contacting you outside of CAPCA, um, Western Growers, and the Almond Board of California from that list um, because what we really want to do is make sure that you have the right resources that are going to be impacting you. CAPCA is also hosting a whole session on rats, nutria, and we're focused on being able to provide updates and resources at our CAPCA annual conference in October up in Reno um, to make sure that our PCAs, our members, are really engaged and they're either able to address what's already in field or they're ready and mobilized if for some reason um, those rats move their direction. Well, that's really great. Thank you for working with all these agencies and these organizations to provide the tools and resources necessary for our growers. Uh, and we're looking forward to the session over at the, the CAPCA conference this year in Reno. And uh, we're also proud sponsors of, of the organization and the conference, so we're really excited for that. So uh, read more about these things in our publications. Uh, we'll definitely be getting some more information out there. And be sure to fill out that survey. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.